All right, we're going to start the studio. We're going to select a new third person platformer. The first thing we have to do is add the dependency. So we're going to go over here, not to the Windows uh, project solutions, but to the to the base project, and we're going to add a dependency right here, and we're going to choose stride.voxels. So now we, we're going to just say don't reload. We're going to have a stride.voxels in the dependencies. Um, that reload doesn't... For some reason it doesn't work correctly so we're going to save the project and we're going to quit the studio and then we're simply going to launch again the project that we just saved there are a few of these wrinkles because this is brand new and we're still make, trying to get it well integrated into the engine uh, and the studio but it's the results are pretty decent uh, for a first cut for beta so now we have our voxel uh, dependency in there and we have our scene in here and we're going to create a new empty entity voxel volume we're going to add a component voxel volume uh, and then under attributes in this voxel volume we're going to add an emission uh, attribute um, which manages how the volume ha uh, does its computation. And then we need to add a compositor. Currently, this is using the standard uh, graphics compositor. Um, and so uh, let's also, we're going to go in and there's two lights in here. There's a directional light. And I'm going to make it so it's a little bit easier to find. There's the directional light. And then there's a skybox. And we're going to just turn the intensity of the skybox to zero. So now we have just directional light. So we can see just the results of direct light on the scene. And I'm going to turn this around. So there we go. Like, you can see this is completely black. And uh, and this is where the light is falling, completely bright. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also move this. I guess it, that's good. So here, what we'd like is to have all this stuff be filled in with indirect light from voxel global illumination. So the next step is for us to create a camera, uh, co a compositor, uh, with the voxel cone tracing shaders. So we'll go in here, and I'm going to rename this just to make it clean, VXG, or voxel GI compositor. Um, now we have the voxel GI compositor, and then we go into our game settings, and here we get to pick our compositor. So we click on this hand, and we choose the voxel GI compositor. We say OK. All right, the next step is to add in a light that will contribute the voxel ambient component uh, from the volume. So we can go to global lights and we can say light, and it doesn't matter what type of, we should add the voxel uh, light ambient to this, but you just add an ambient light and uh, name it v, uh, voxel GI ambient. This is going to be the voxel ambient component of lighting, and we go over here and we say, Voxel, you're going to get this this error because it doesn't have a volume yet. So you go right here where it says volume, click on the hand and choose your voxel volume. And then when the voxel volume comes up, you say resume. And now what we're getting, it, you'll see the shaders recompile. Um, now what we're getting is right here, this is the voxel ambient component. So if we, if we set the intensity of the voxel volume to zero, we see this all goes black. We set the intensity to one, we see that here... Uh, this is filled in with ambient light that's coming from the outside. Um, and we can see that also happen here if we um, if we move our character, which the character has some has some uh, glow mapping on it on its face, so it actually emits light from the face. 
And uh, here you can see it appearing on the wall. Um, and we can actually take our directional light and turn the directional light intensity down. We can even turn it down to zero. Uh, let's turn the directional. So this is the directional light in the scene. I've set the directional light to zero, and now we're getting voxel ambient light in the area off of this guy's face mask. If we turn off the voxel ambient, everything is just sort of the direct light of the glow from the character. But if we put the ambient light on, you know, we can put it on at a higher level. You can see we're now ambiently lighting this entire area, basically off this guy's face shield with voxel global illumination. And of course, if we add back in the directional light, then we get the entire scene lit and we get this, you know, behavior right here. Um, and, you know, another important component of this is here, if this, you know, character is standing completely in shadow, without the voxel ambient, he's black. We have a glow mapping from his face, but his character model has no direct light falling on it. Um, and so if we turn on the voxel global illumination, we're getting ambient light from the entire scene and from his face shield that's lighting him up, even though he's standing in shadow. So right there, there you go. That is voxel global illumination. It is in stride 4.0.0.1 beta 2 0.926. Um, now there is uh, one extremely important wrinkle that we're still working on right now, which is that when you try to build a project with this, there's some build dependency issue where it's not picking up the library. And so we're still working on figuring out why it's not building a game. I mean, this has been working for more than six months, but getting it integrated into, Vo into the Stride Studio has taken a little longer. Um, probably maybe even in, ironically longer than getting it working um, but soon we'll have that figured out too but here you can play with it in the studio and you can see it working in real time uh, so enjoy and check it out and we'll be you know improving this and patching it over time now you should know this is not something as in, in my other video that i explained that you're going to necessarily run out and throw into every single game number one it does take a you know substantial hit to frame rate uh if you're talking about a complex scene it takes a bunch of texture memory for the voxel data. And also, um, there there are flickering artifacts. Here you can see, the, you know, because the voxel is based on discrete voxel sizes, when things move, there's flickering aliasing. And um, so if you have a character moving through an environment with a lot of voxel illumination, it ha can have a distracting amount of flicker. Um, there's some things that we can do, you know, even with the current implementation to to minimize that, like we can go and we can change the actual size of the voxel volume to be either less or more precise. Let me get rid of some of these things, okay. The voxel volume allows you to set the size of the voxel volume. So we can make the size of the voxel volume grid different. Um, in this case, I made it much more coarse. So now the voxels are much, much larger, which at least will change it so it's not as, uh, you know, it doesn't have those small pixelations that are flickering. Um, and we'll wait until, when, as soon as it's done compiling these shaders, we'll see the result. Still working on it. So now here, you know, you can see the flickering has changed to be like much more coarse granulated. That actually made it far worse. Um, and you can also make the voxel volume uh, smaller, the granularity of the voxel volume smaller. So if we go to, you know, of course, this takes more texture memory and more compute time. Um, so this is the vo this is the vo approximate voxel size. Um, and there's also another little wrinkle in this, which is currently the voxel tracing is specified in terms of the number of voxels it traces. Um, the step count is the number of voxels it traces, which is a little bit challenging, we realized, because as you change the voxel grid size, it changes how far the voxel cone will trace. And so, um, we're going to change this so that this is actually specified in distance rather than in uh, trace size. Because, like, for example, maybe you wanted to trace further. Um, maybe you wanted to trace less further. Uh, but you probably want it to be specified in world distance, not in this arbitrary uh, voxel count. But, you know, these are some of the things that you can play with and tweak. Um, 
when looking at the results. Um, so here with more steps, we get a slightly more granular result. We'll wait until it's done. Um, so you see with more steps, there's a little bit less of that flickering because it more likely hits all of the areas in front of you when it's doing it. But it's still, you know, as you see, it's still got quite a bit of like, you know, abrupt behavior, which means for compute for games, like interactive games, this may not be the best thing or you may have to tweak it a lot. And we'll be working in the future on making it so that those uh, that there's some sort of temporal smoothing so that if that does occur, that it'll ba basically smooth that out over time. Uh, but at the same time, there's many applications for which having a voxel visualization of lighting is valuable, even if it's not uh, perfectly smooth and interactive for a game. So at any rate, there you go. There's VXGI and some of its limitations and some of its capabilities inside of Stride Beta.